listening to this uh, on-demand session. So just want to give you a heads up that this is the same session that we delivered, that I delivered on 24th as a part of uh, January 24th, 2025 as a part of Azure Power Lunch. But um, my mistake, I forgot to turn on the recording. And um, that's why I'm doing this session on demand. So uh, this session, so make sure people can um, see the on-demand uh, recording, and that's why we are doing it. So same thing that we delivered on 124. Um, and it's about how to customize JWT claim for enterprise application. Okay, so let's, as we always do, let's quickly go through our agenda. Here is the quick agenda. We are going to be talking about what are the JWT claim and why we need to customize it and how we can do it. It's a very demo driven session, so you will not um, be seeing uh, much of uh, uh, slides. There's a couple of slides for reference. OK, so first of all. As you know, uh, JW to token, JSON Web Token are used by OIDC and OAuth application, and they are exchanged between callers and the callee, and they contain pieces of information known as claims. OK, and uh, in certain situation, you need to have custom claims being added uh, to these JW token. And the way to do the different ways of doing it, and one of the approach that we're going to talk about today, um, that's what we are going to look at. Okay. One thing to keep in mind here is that um, this approach that we are going to be suggesting, um, it's we're going to be doing it for the kind of a uh, a non-production environment in the demo, but I will have a slide and uh, in the slide deck and references, you will see what you should do in your production system. So without further ado, I'm going to jump into the demo and show me, uh, show you the application that I have uh, for uh, this particular uh, scenario. So this is my very simple application. It has a, a web API, a headless web API, uh, which is to-do list. And then a client application which sends the token and gets the um, to do um, list of to do items. Okay, so I'm just going to run this application. And before I go any further, I'm going to move this to the side so it doesn't bother us. Let's do this one more time. Okay, so this is bringing up our application. This is the um, uh, API, and now it's going to bring up the client in a second. This is the client application. And if I click on it, um, it's going to take me to the debug screen. Here is the debug screen. Let's take a look at the token. So what I'm going to do is uh, this is the token text visualizer. I'm going to just copy the entire text token. Copy. I'm going to go back here. And I am going to open the, um, sorry, the JWT.MS site. Okay. So it's going to show the claims. So here are the claims. As you can see, there are no custom claims here, okay, or standard claims. Okay. Let's take a look at the applications themselves. There are two app registrations that I have created. OK, and you have to do it one for the client, one for the server, OK, because that's how you tell uh, set these things up for identity exchange in um, Azure AD. So this is my first application, as you can see, very simple. I am this is the client. Let's go to the server first. This is the server. And as you can see here, um, everything is set up like this. Um, pretty standard, pretty vanilla. Um, I am exposing an API, so this is the scope, and uh, this is pretty much it. On the client side, if we go, um, this is the um, client application, and I am um, using API permissions here, so this app is accessing in the service app, so that, that's all there is to it. Okay, so now we're going to add the custom claim. So first, what, what we will have to do is, we will have to go into the uh, service principal side 
on our server app. We are here. I have just already have the UI open. Go into single sign on and start adding the claim. Go to attribute and claims, edit, and uh, let's um, add the claims. Okay, so we go in here and we're going to add a new claim and we're going to call it X claim underscore test one. And this is going to be a static text, you know, some static value just to show. Okay, so I'm just going to put it in here and that's that. Okay, static value. Uh, let's uh, save it. And now we are going to add another claim. And it's going to be a derived attribute from an existing source, and I'm going to call it test two. So what we do is we look at the attributes user dot mail and select that. OK, just keep in mind you can select any attribute, but make sure there's a value for it. Otherwise, the claim will not show up in a future session. I will show how you to use custom claim provider because that becomes really powerful if you want to enrich the claims using uh, information from other systems and things like that. So that's a future session. But this one, these two claims have been added. And uh, that's it. That's all we have to do. Uh, we're going to do it at this moment and let's uh, rerun our application now. OK. And by the way, just keep in mind, we are adding the claim on the service side. Okay, so just uh, keep that in mind. OK, so this is the uh, our application. And if I click on the to do list, so now it's trying to get the claims. And here is the error. Look at the error. So this application is required to be configured with application specific signing key. OK, so there are two ways to do it. You can use application specific signing key or you can uh, set a flag in a call accept map claims to true and that will um, do it without using application signing. Just keep in mind for non production scenario application specific signing key and for single tenant that's OK just for demo purposes, but for production scenario you should be using application specific signing key. You should not use accept, uh, you know, uh, map claims flag. OK, and I will um, show it to you here. So let's go into the manifest of our um, uh, our. Uh, let's first stop this thing. Stop it and let's uh, set those values up. So what we're going to do is we are go going to go into the manifest of our server and first thing first we are going to go into api and accept map claim we're going to turn it to true as i said this is we are doing it for a non prod and especially it, you can do it for a single tenant application for multiple tenants you should never use it okay you should use it for uh, you should use the uh, uh, signing uh, certificate okay you should you do that so this the second thing you, that you need to do is, and let me go back to the slide deck. This one I have outlined here that I want to, once we summarize, you will take a look at it. You will have to set the identifier URI to a value that is um, your with a default tenant name or to your uh, custom tenant name, whatever, if you are using a custom name, okay? So let's go there and uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to set this value up. So. The second step is go back up here. And set this value here. OK, so we set this up and you can set it up to Plus sv3 dot ends, uh, dot on microsoft.com as well. That's too, totally fine. OK, these two values are set up. Let's save it. Just keep in mind once you change this. Uh, your scope will be different. So what you have to do is wherever you are using this scope, you have to update that scope as well. That's one thing. So this is just and by the way, this is. 
the way how we are, um, you know, calling this application. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in into my application and into my uh, client app setting dot JSON. And this is the scope. OK, and I am going to update with the sorry with the new scope. So now we have the new scope here. Let's save this. OK, one last thing that we do need to do is on the server side. The audience value has to be changed because we change this. Um, identifier URL so audience value has to be changed. So that audience value would be now this. OK, that's it. That's all the changes that we have to make. So just let's do a. Let's run the demo and then we'll do a quick recap on what step did we do? OK. So let's do this again. So now we are running the server. And this is the client came up. Let's click on to do list. This is going to request the token and we will take a look at the token in a second in a debug mode. We go in here. Text visualizer. We uh, basically select the the entire value and we go back to our JWT.MS. Let's refresh it. Last time there was no custom token. Oh, sorry, let me just go back here again. Uh, so uh, for some reason, uh, the just control C doesn't work. You have to copy it like this. Let's go back here. Let's copy uh, this thing here and let's look at the claims. Look, these two custom claims show up. OK, these are the two uh, claims that we added. OK, so and let's uh, now let let this thing run. Look, it's running fine. So what the steps we did? Let's go through each step uh, one at a time. Uh, let's going back to our browser. What we did, first of all, we went to attribute and claims and we added two custom claims. At this point, you can, I mean, you can do all types of claims, but what I'm showing you, a static claim and a claim that is derived on an existing attribute. So that's what we are using. A mail, um, you know, user.mail, which is a derived claim, and then some static value test 001. That's one thing. Second thing that you have to do is um, that we talk about here in the slide deck for um, you have to use custom signing key. OK. We are not for and this is this except map claim should not be used. Actually, you should be using custom signing key. OK, should not be using map accepted except map claims for single tenant on multi tenant for production use custom signing key that's recommendation so since it's a demo we are uh, not setting the uh, uh, signing key we are just going into the manifest and what we are doing over there is setting this accept claims to true normally it's null that's one thing the second thing is we have to set the identifier uri to something unique which has the either the fqdn of your Azure AD or the default. So once again, look here in the slide deck, as I mentioned, it should be either something like myapi.contoso.com, where the contoso.com is the custom domain name of your Azure AD, or it can be the default. If you're using the default Azure AD, contoso.microsoft.com slash myapi, things like that. So whatever you can use, once you do it, save it. And the other two things that I mentioned, which are application related. So if you are using the scope, just keep in mind your scope has now changed. OK, so you will have to update the scope wherever you are using the scope in your um, in your code. So we are using the scope in the code. Um, here in the. Um, in here, this is the scope is being used, and also um, since uh, we are using this, uh, it's changed the audience, so we have to update the audience in the service service side. So this is once again, this is specific to application how application is being used, but this is kind of um, I'm using an ASP.NET Core, so if you are using 
um, Node.js, you may have to change these values somewhere else. Okay, so just keep that in mind. So once again, once we do that, we go back here, we can see these values in the token. Okay, so that's that's the uh, I mean very with very uh, simple kind of a you know simple way you can change these values and and uh, you know add those custom tokens um, uh, sorry add those custom claims and then with that but just keep in mind you will have to uh, set a few things custom signing key if this is production or accept mapped claims values if this is a non-production uh, app or uh, for a single tenant app you can do that and then use the identifier make sure you identify uris are uh, that you're using they should point to as a unique uri that has the custom domain name of your um, azure ad or the simply something using the default tenant name okay with that once you have it this thing uh, will start working so this is all that's all i wanted to uh, share with you uh, for this particular session and just keep in mind uh, the link to the resources that i have in the end you should be able to you know uh, create your own um if you want to play around with this stuff watching this demo you should be able to uh, repro it uh, pretty easily and in a future session i will show a, kind of a, a scenario which is becomes like um is the next level which is having a custom claim provider which you can use uh, while you are you are adding custom claims to uh, jwt so you can use your own custom claim provider based on uh, and then bring it in to generate these uh, custom claims so with that thank you very much and once again i apologize for not recording the original call this is a rerun of the same call that i'm doing that's why i don't see any audience for uh, you know to make sure that people can watch it uh, on demand so thank you very much and the link to the presentation will be in the um, description of the video and I hope you find this content useful. Thank you very much and have a wonderful rest of the act.